Hey everybody, Winstreak here. Today's question comes from Techno Dylan, and they wanted a continuation of our dynamic inventory setup that I did a video on a bit ago, but where the items can stack. We'll hop into the code, and the code is almost the exact same as it was. I added a few things. So I added the text here, and I put it on a container for the inventory slot, and that way I only need to add one, and then in the beginning of my code, I set a position. Since it's a container, they'll all automatically create their own. And then the position I set is to an image point that is in my inventory slot. And you can see if I click on Im image here, I have uh, this position just down in the bottom right corner. So they'll all just create their text in the bottom right corner. And then I set it to nothing right away. That way it's invisible. And essentially, if there is a potion overlapping that inventory slot, I will set it to the potion amount, which is a variable that I added to each potion. I also added a multiple buy bouillon to the green potion, and that just lets me buy five at a time or one at a time, just to show a different mechanic for purchasing. I currently only have the red one being able to be destroyed in my inventory slot. Um, and all I added to the code here was a way to get rid of that one. So essentially it checks to see the inventory slot is destroyed and it just sets it back to an empty text again. And from here we're gonna set it up so they stack. So what I need to do is have a check for any of my stackable items. And like I said, I'm just gonna do green and yellow stacking. Red will be a single slot only. Um, so my green and yellow potion need to do a call before they call add to inventory. So I am going to add a new function and check for potions. And we just want to call check for potions and see if it finds a potion in our inventory of the same type first. And if it does, we will add to it instead. So we're going to add the parameters. And we just want to make sure we have the same parameters on this as we do for our add to inventory because we will send straight from here to add to inventory if we don't find it. And I'm just going to edit this to our new check for potions function. So right now I'm just working with the yellow one and instead of ever going to add to inventory we're going to send it down here first. So we're going to need to do a check for each and see if it's overlapping any that are full rather than overlapping any that are empty. And then if it is full, we'll check to see if it's overlapping the same type. So in this case, the yellow. So we will take that call and we will add our sub event and we will check the bull. And we're gonna invert this one. And then we want that for each. So we check each one that is full. And we still only want to do it once. Oh, we got to add that local first, and then so it will go through each one and check. And then if it finds one, we'll throw another sub event. We have to see if it contains the yellow potion. So when it finds an inventory slot. We will see if that inventory slot is overlapping another object that is yellow potion. If it is, we want to add to the text item amount. Sorry, text item amount is pulled from potion yellow, so we want to add to the yellows variable. And we will just add one since that's the only option. If it's doesn't find anything, then we want to throw another variable in here, and this one will be found, and we'll start it as false. So if we ever find the potion we're looking for, we're just going to flip that to true. Uh, when this is done checking each one, if it is false still, it means we didn't find one at all. 
So we want to see if it is not found. And if it's not found, we're going to go ahead and call add to inventory, which was our initial call before we made this new one. So we have that. Now we have to add the green to be able to do the same thing. So we need to break this down into whether or not it is checking for yellow or checking for green. So we'll do that in here. I'm going to add a sub event. And in this, I will add a check for type. The yellow is just yellow. And then I'm going to copy these into the bottom one here and change them to greens. And make sure it's overlapping green. And then we want to do the same thing for green that we're doing for yellow. So we'll switch these both to green. But we don't want to add one here. We want to add amount. And I'm going to change this other one to amount as well, even though we only have it set up to come in as one. But this one can come in as one and five, so it definitely needs to be amount. And then if it's not found and type is yellow, then we'll add the yellow one. And if it's not found and type is green, then we'll add a green one. And again, I'm going to change these amounts to be variables instead of constants. Especially important for the green one. But changing the yellow one allows me to make future changes and not have to figure out why it's not working. We never changed our call. So we want to check for other potions instead of adding to inventory. And then based on whether we are doing the multi-buy or not, we want to send in a different amount value. And then the code in here will add to inventory for us. And one last thing to add, when we want to use a potion, so when we click on them in our inventory, we now have to check the amount. And if the amount is greater than one, we don't want to destroy it. We just want to subtract from the amount. So I'm going to just copy since it's what I want, but for our other colors. So I'm going to change this one to all yellow. And destroy yellow. OK. All right, so I took our, our destroy red potion and made it all yellow. But we do need to run the check if the value is greater than. So we will add a sub event. And with the yellow potion's value. Essentially, if it's equal to one, that'll be the last one and we'll destroy it. If it's greater than one, then we don't want to destroy it. We will want to reset the text, um, but we won't want to change the inventory empty setting. So we will take that and subtract one from the amount. And then we will re-display the text so it shows that new value. Oh, I got to click happy. I need to make sure I'm checking to see if it's overlapping an inventory slot, not itself. So hopping back in, see if enough that works. So you can see we stack them. It goes down to one, and now it's gone. And now items can go in its old spot, and it can rejoin and restack. So you can obviously just redo this for green or any other ones, and you'll be good to go. Hopefully that helps out. Let me know in the comments, and have a good one.